Hello, I'm Pastor Ron C. Hill of the Love and Unity Christian Fellowship, inviting you to come and worship with us. We are one of the children's church. We have a lot of prayer. Prayer is going on all the time, and we're blessing God and worshiping God. Great music, great praise. But the most important thing is, is the gospel is being preached. The Holy Ghost is moving, and the lives of people are being changed and blessed. And you can be added to that number. Come expecting to hear from God. He loves you, and he has a blessing with your name on it. Now, also tell them how they can get involved. We're one block off the 91 freeway, and we would love to have you come and be a part. That's 1840 South Wilmington in the city of Compton. Please come. You won't be disappointed. And we love you, and we're praying just for you.
We stand on our feet and let's praise our awesome God. Come on, saints, clap your hands and give God praise. God is awesome. He's great and he's marvelous and we bless him on this Wednesday night. Father, we come before your presence and we are grateful to assemble here tonight for Wednesday night Bible study. Thank you for this day that you've given us. Thank you for overcoming challenges that we all face on a day-to-day -day basis. Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory. We claim the victory tonight in the name of Jesus. We thank you because, God, we win by faith. And we know, God, that you will lead us and you will guide us. Granted, we continue, God, to look unto you who is the author and finisher of our faith. We're praying for those who are present tonight in the sanctuary that, God, you'll strengthen each and every one of us. Look on every family. Look on every home. We pray, God, that you would bring peace into our homes, bring peace into our families. Save our unsaved our loved ones, God. Those in our families who do not know Christ as Savior, God, we know that you are a Savior because you saved us. And so we're praying that you would draw our loved ones to you in Jesus' name. You said that you will that none perish and that all come into repentance. You're not slack concerning your promise as some men count slackness, 
but you're long-suffering to us, Word. So we pray in Jesus' name that you draw our loved ones. Now, God, we pray for those who are viewing online tonight that you would minister to them as well. We lift up our bishop and first lady, God. We pray that you will continue to strengthen them, continue to show yourself strong and mighty on their behalf. God, we pray you'll comfort them during this time of bereavement, that you give them strength, that you give them peace. And any other who, who is suffering and who are, who's dealing with a time of bereavement, God, comfort those who have lost a loved one. We lift up the sick before you tonight in Jesus' name. We pray that you will heal those who are sick in the body because you are the healer. And we know that you can bring healing to our physical bodies. Now we pray that you would anoint the speaker on tonight to bring a word, a word that will bless, a word that will refresh, a word that will strengthen the people of God. Now, Satan, we serve you notice. Eviction papers are being served to you, and we cast you out in the name of Jesus. We pray that the house of God would be clean, be sterile, so that God can minister to every heart that's present. In Jesus' name, let's praise God tonight. Praise God tonight. Please remain standing. I am introducing uh, a woman who I fell in love with. And uh, she is a very special person to me because she is my wife. Amen. The Bible says a man that findeth the wife findeth the good thing. All right. Find you one, brothers. Find you one. And obtain favor from the Lord. Please remain standing as I introduce the uh, preacher teacher tonight in the person of Lady Elder. Rita Branch, who's my wife. God bless you. Praise the Lord. And just for completion, he's my husband. Amen, somebody. Father God, we come to you in Jesus' name, and we just thank you, Lord God, for any time we can come into your presence, Lord God. So we thank you for being here by your spirit, Lord God, and we ask you to have your way, Lord. I ask you, Lord, God, that you anoint me to teach your word with boldness and without compromise. Hide me behind the cross. Cover me in your blood, Lord God, that as a spoken word goes forth, you give us revelation on what you would have us to do, what you would have us to say. Speak to us individually and collectively, and we'll be careful to give you all the praise and honor and glory. And if you agree with that prayer, say in Jesus' name, amen. You may have your seats. Praise the Lord. First, giving honor to God, to Bishop Hill, to Lady Osi, to all the elders, the ministers, lady elders, missionaries, whatever your title is. God bless you, saints of the Most High God. Amen. You know, I don't take it lightly to stand before the people of God, especially in this place. There are so many elders and ministers and teachers who can exegete and preach the word of God. So I thank uh, Bishop Hill for this opportunity. And I also want to say this. I have been here for some time. And Bishop and Sister Hill have kept the main thing the main thing. If you're viewing here by stream, if you're new here, I'm here to tell you that they're the real deal. I respect our leaders, I love our leaders, and wherever you are, Bishop and Sister Osi, we love you, we honor you, we respect you, we understand the gift that you gave us, you know, and a lot of times when people talk about their, their, their leaders, sometimes it's full of fluff, but ain't no fluff in me because ain't no fluff in them. They the real deal, and I praise God for them. So I give honor to them tonight. Praise the Lord for our leaders. Amen? Amen. 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 Glory to God. So wherever you are, blessings and honor and favor, and may God surround you and protect you and give you peace and rest. Whatever you want, surround you by people who will bless you. Wherever you're doing, wherever you touch, it's wherever you go, it's going to prosper. So we speak peace unto you wherever you are right now in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, you know... Um, Next week, we're going to enter into a time of uh, prayer and fasting. We're going to enter into a shut-in. 
And a lot of times when we enter into a shut-in, we used to do, we used to pray every three hours, right? You guys remember that? And Pastor Hill was gracious enough to give us two days this week as prep work for next week. If you guys were here on Sunday, he asked us if we could pray and fast for two days this week. And that's just prep work for next week because we're going to enter into three days of prayer and fasting. We're going to have a shut-in next week, right? And we're going to need everybody to participate because we're tearing down strongholds. We're going to be casting the devil out. We're taking on strength so we can do the work of God. We're going to take on strength because we want to see the glory of God. Amen? So we're going to talk about today about prayer and fasting as prep work for next week. Amen? Okay. Now, there are many people in the Bible who fasted and prayed, right? We know that Daniel fasted and prayed in Daniel chapter 10, verse 2 and 3. The Bible said he mourned for three days and did not eat choice food for 21 days. And that's pretty much where the Daniel fast came from because he didn't eat meat, he, drink, he did not drink wine, but he fasted and prayed for 21 days. We know that Esther prayed and fasted for three days and she prayed and fasted to get wisdom and instruction from the Lord before she went to the king who happened to be her husband. There's a word in there for somebody. You, sometimes you need to know how to approach your husband. Sometimes you need to get wisdom for the Lord on how to approach the king. Amen? And that's in Esther chapter 4, verse 16. Jesus himself fasted 40 days. And let me give you the references. Matthew chapter 4, verse 2. Mark chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. And Luke chapter 4, verse 1. So Jesus himself fasted 40 days before he was tempted by the devil. Now also the disciples prayed and fasted. And in the Jewish culture, people fasted and prayed throughout the Old Testament and as a religious practice or as a religious culture. Amen? So likewise, we as Christians, we should be praying and fasting. We here at Love and Unity, we practice it, so it's not really new to us. But a lot of people aren't used to it because they think it's something foreign. But we here have been practicing it so much that we almost say it every day, right? We fast and pray and read our Bibles, read our Bibles, fast and pray. That's what we do here, okay? But let us talk about prayer first, okay? Now, prayer is communication with God. Now, anytime there is successful communication, it must be two-way communication. A lot of times when we pray, we just get up there and we just start talking and talking and talking, and we don't allow the Spirit of God to speak to us. See, God has set it up for us to have successful communication with him. You see, we're able to talk to God, and we pour out our heart, and we tell the Lord how we feel and what's going on and what we're believing for, and he, in turn, listens to us. But then there should be a time in prayer where we're quiet, where the Spirit of God talks to us, and we listen to him and obey. See, we need to practice quiet time in our prayer, because in the quiet time is when God shows up and speaks to us. I mean, think about it. We as believers, blood-bought, spirit-filled, chosen before the foundation of the world, we have the opportunity to talk to the God who created all things. We were chosen before the foundation of the world and God gave us his spirit and he is saying to us, come. He is saying to us, come boldly. You don't have to be timid because no longer is God angry with us. He has called us his friend and because we are his friends, we can come to him. The God who caused that eclipse the other day where people were standing at what was created and forgot about the creator. He who caused that to happen, for other people to be blessed and to see and stand back in awe, we, my God, have the opportunity to talk to him. And he says, come. And, in our, and when we're quiet before him, he can commune with us. He can talk to us. He will impart some things in us. When we can't get instruction because we're so busy talking, God says, be quiet and come before me. I asked you to come. So he communes with us. He imparts things in us. He teaches us. He can guide us. He will instruct us. 
He will remind us of who we are in him and who he is in us. Amen, somebody? He will impart wisdom. He will impart knowledge. He will impart understanding if we come and be quiet. Because we can have an encounter with the one true and living God. But let me say this. If you want to have an encounter with God, you got to be part of the family. Amen? Now, this is a note for new believers, especially when it comes to prayer. When you're a new believer, sometimes you feel like you don't know what to say or how to say it. And I'm always honest when I talk to people because when I first got saved, I didn't know what to say. I would say to God, God, I'm tripping. What's up? Because that's how I spoke. Some people think you have to pray in that old English. How be it thou, thou understandest all these mysteries. God ain't tripping off of that. God just wants us to come with a pure heart. He just wants us to come and pour our heart out to him. Real quick, let me give you a tip. God understands English. God understands Spanish. God understands French, German, Chinese, Japanese, and trip this. He understands Ebonics. So when you don't know what to say, just speak from your heart. And the Spirit of God is able to take that and present it before God and translate it the way God wants it to be said. Now, here's something else. The stronger and the more you're mature in God, your language will change before God. You ask anybody in here who's been saved for a certain amount of time, we don't pray the same way we did when we first got saved. Something happens because we allowed him to impart something in us. And when he imparted something in us, there was a pressing in us. And we learned how to pray. And we learned how to press. And we learned how to push. All because we spent quiet time and the Lord imparted something in us. Now, when we pray, we need to also pray the word of God. Because the word of God is ultimately the will of God. When we look at Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 12, in the King James Version, it says, Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. In the NIV Version, it says, The Lord said to me, You have seen correctly, for I am watching to see what my word is going to fulfill or what my word is going to do. You see, God watches his word to perform it. So if we are anointed believers in Christ, filled with the very spirit of God that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, the kingdom of God residing in the very believers of God, when we speak the word of God, he by his spirit is watching to make it happen. It's almost as if, the, you know, the Bible says that you abide in me and my word abide in you, I will, you will ask. And when we ask, it's like we're speaking and praying the word of God. So when we pray for healing out of the anointed vessel filled with the spirit of God, God sees you pray healing and he's following that word of healing to heal wherever you sent it. God is watching his word to perform it. When you pray for prosperity, God is watching that word that you prayed to make sure when it hits that target, he performs it. There used to be a time in the world, because I ain't always been saved. There used to be a time in the world when we used to say, my word is bond. God's word is bond. He going to make it good. He's not like man that he should lie, nor the son of man where he should repent. His word is good. I know we've run into people who lie a lot, and I know we've run into people who give their word and don't keep it. God's not like that. Every word he said will not drop on the ground void. It will not return to him void. His word is good. His word is good. If you don't hear anything else tonight, hear that God's word is good. In a time where people are trying to say what God said, if it ain't in the scripture, ain't God, and it ain't good. God will watch over his word to perform it. A lot of people are speaking in the name of God, but don't have the backup of the Holy Ghost, nor are speaking in the word of God. If it's not in the word, it may not be of God, but I'll tell you one thing. If it's in the word, it is of God. And if God blessed us to have it in the word, he's going to make it good. If he says something to you in a rhema word, he's going to make it good. He's just God like that. Amen. 
So we need to understand that when we pray the word of God, we are in essence praying the will of God. We're saying, God, thy will be done. Mm. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. We're saying, God, as you rule in your kingdom in heaven, rule down here on earth. God, if there's healing and divine presence, God, have it down here on earth. God, if there is no lack in heaven, there will be no lack for us on earth. But you got to be part of the family. You know, if you don't know God, he's just not giving people stuff. I mean, he is a God where he will bless people, but he wants you to be part of the family. It's like going to my dad and asking my dad to give you something. My dad might help you out, but he's going to tell me, you ain't part of the family. If you're part of the family, I'm going to take care of you. Amen? So in essence, when we pray the word of God, we're praying the will of God. Amen? Let's look at John chapter 1, verse 1. A very familiar verse to mostly everybody in this room. And the Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. When we drop down to verse 14, it says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. Let's think about this verse for a minute. In the beginning, I don't know where it is, but I know it's the beginning. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So in the beginning there was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And all through the Old Testament, they would talk about God. They would talk about the word. They were taught the word from their ancestors. They were taught the word so much that they would put it up on post and they would read the word because the word was in the beginning. And that word was God. That word was with God. So all through the Old Testament, they practiced the word of God. They would talk about it. They would try to do it. Every once in a while, God would come down and touch him, and then they would go, he would go back. And finally, we get to the day when Jesus Christ himself was manifested in the flesh. He is the word, and now the word is flesh. And the thing about Jesus being in the flesh, he did what the word was supposed to do. If the word said heal, he was healing. If the word said cast out devils, he was casting out devils. If the word said there's provision, he would make provision. He did the word because he was the word, because he was with the word. Amen? He was the word. That's all he could do. That's all he knew to do. He casted out devils. He laid hands on the sick. He made provisions. He healed people because that was the word. That was what they were taught in the beginning, and it flowed all the way through the Old Testament. So now Jesus Christ dies on the cross. And the people who were there were thinking, what happened to the word? The word is gone. But guess what? He came back. And then when he came back, he talked with them. He fed them. He sat there with them for 40 days. And he left again. God, what's going on with the word? He left again. But then on the day of Pentecost, he said that I'm going to come back. I'm going to be the same type of me, right? But I'll be in spirit form. So he came back in the spirit of God, and that was the word. That was him in the spirit form. And then when he came back, he said, I'm not just going to be in Christ. I'm going to be in all the people of God. So now as the people of God, we have the very power, the very majesty, the very love, the very peace. The fullness of the Godhead bodily now resides in believers of Jesus Christ. And guess what? He also left his word on record. So now that we have the very power of God, the very majesty of God, the very grace and love of God, we can speak the word of God that we have a written word of God and God is obligated to perform it. Amen. He's obligated because his word is bond. Now we also need to understand that when we pray the word of God, we need to be holy vessels. Now, I don't know if Pastor Hill said this or I heard this many years ago, but trip this. When a holy person believes in a holy God, speaks his holy scriptures, the Holy Spirit is going to show up. So if we are holy people and we are believing in a holy God and we speak the holy scriptures, 
watch the Holy Spirit show up. Amen? Now, another reason we need to pray the word of God is in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. And the scripture says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now, most of us understand this scripture because basically it's saying that all scripture is inspired or is God breathed, right? And whenever God breathes, there's life. So guess what? There's life in this word. So when God breathes, there is life in the word, and this word is going to do something for us. It says that it's profitable for doctrine. That means it's going to teach us something. If you don't know what to do, read the word of God. The word of God is going to teach us something. Then it says for reproof. In other words, when we read the word of God, God is going to show us where we err. He's going to show us where we miss it. And then it says for correction. So once God shows us where we miss it, he also tells us how to get it right. Amen. Then it says for instruction in righteousness. This is my favorite part because God has already declared us righteous. So he's instructing us on how to be who he has already called us to be. People always say, well, I don't know how to be a Christian. God has instructed us in righteousness. So when we read the scriptures, we get instruction that we may be perfect. We may be mature and to be able to do everything that God has called us to do. Amen? Okay. So we talked about prayer, and now we're going to talk about fasting. Now, I know most people have heard the statement that when people pray, things happen, right? But I'd like to say this. When people pray and fast, God happens. God is able to move supernaturally in our lives. When we pray and fast, we open a door to release the very kingdom of God. Please note, fasting without prayer is only dieting. Fasting without prayer is only dieting. Now, we know there are benefits to fasting. You know, some of you may be in here doing the intermediate fast. I know a lot of people who do that. But then they're just dieting. They're fasting. But God has given fasting as a God idea, not a man idea. Because when we add fasting to prayer, we better stand back and see the salvation of the Lord. Amen? Let's look at Isaiah chapter 58, verses 1 through 2. Isaiah 58, verses 1 through 12. I'm sorry. And I'll go ahead and read. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways. As a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinances of their God, they ask for me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Verse 3. Wherefore have we fasted? Say they, and thou hast not, thou hasn't has thou seest not. Wherefore have we afflicted our souls, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure and exact all your labors. Behold, as ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness, ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. Verse five. Is it such a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day of the Lord? Now, God is rebuking people for this fast that they call. If you have anything, if you have a, a teaching Bible, it says that the hypocrites were reproved by God for their fast. Okay, they were fasting with the wrong heart, with the wrong mind. In some scriptures, it says that they were seeking God daily. Okay, it says as a nation, they did righteousness. They forsook not the ordinances of God. In other words, they obeyed the word of God. They delighted in even talking about God. They delighted in that. But then they got haughty. They're like, but Lord, we did all of this and we fasted and you didn't see us. 
They said, God, we did all of this, but when we afflicted our souls, you didn't even notice. Now, one version of the Bible says that they were so busy studying about God, and they said that they loved to worship God, but they only really loved to appear that they knew him. They only really liked people to think that they were living right, and they only wanted to appear to be God-fearing because in the background, they were arguing, they were treating people badly, and they were making money off of fasting. One version even says, and you swing a, mi a mean fist and act pious and religious. So they were out there fighting. But then they were trying to fast because they wanted the appearance of being holy. The, this version of the Bible says, now this kind of fasting you do won't even get your prayers off the ground. It was the attitude that they had that was wrong. They were doing it to be seen. Let's look at verse 6. Is this this, is not this the fast that I have chosen to loosen the bands of wickedness and to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free that ye may break every yoke? See, this is the fast that God has chosen. When we fast next week, we're fasting that people get delivered from the hands of the enemy. When we fast, people are going to be set free in the spirit. They're going to be able to not be in bondage to the devil. I'm talking about when we fast next week, when we pray and fast next week. This is the fast that God has chosen. He said to the people who are under heavy burdens and who are under sin and shame, they're going to be delivered. When we pray and fast next week, our family members are going to be delivered because we're going to spend time and press them before God. It goes on to say that those will be delivered who are oppressed and who are duped, depressed. If there's any depression in this house, if there's any suicidal people in this house, if there's anybody dealing with depression, we're going to cast it out in Jesus' name. When we press into a fast, we're going to the fast that God has chosen. Amen? People will be delivered from frustration, from past hurts, from brokenness, and from pain, and every yoke that is not of God will be broken in Jesus' name. This is the fast that God has chosen. Amen? Verse 7, it is not to deal the bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house. When thou seest the naked, that thou covereth him, and that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh. When we do the fast that God has chosen, God will lift the hearts of those who who are broken. God will help the poor. God will use us to bring people into the house of the Lord. God will use us to be a vessel of his Holy Spirit because that's what he wants. That's the fast that he has chosen. It goes on to say that our sins will be exposed. If there's something that we're doing that's not right before God, it may not be a sin, but a ease, uh, may not be a, weight, a sin, but a weight that so easily besets us. I'm saying, God, I want to be right before you. So, God, I want you to show me my heart that when we go into this fast, Lord God, if I have any sins, Lord God, or any weights that so easily beset me, I want you to expose it, Lord God, because people are standing in the need of you, Lord God. And we as a church here at Love and Unity on this side of town, we want you to flow through us, Lord God, as never before, because people are hurting and people are broken, Lord God. So I don't want to be caught up in something that I shouldn't be caught up in. When we do the fast that God has chosen, he will show us our hearts. When we get quiet before him and pour our hearts, he'll show us where we're missing it. And then he'll give us an opportunity to get it right. I'm of this opinion. God, show me me. Because I don't want to be walking down the street and have a rooster talk to me, have a donkey talk to me. I don't want to have a snake stand up and talk to me. God, I don't want to be caught up in, and I don't want to be lost, Lord God. I don't want to be part of the great falling away, Lord God. So speak to me, Lord God. COVID did a work on some Christians. Some Christians haven't been able to get back. And people are getting caught up in the great falling away. Lord God, I spend time with you, Lord God. Please don't let me get caught up in the great falling away. Show me me, Lord God. Show me me. Verse 8. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thy health shall spring forth speedily. 
and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. It says that the light and the righteousness of God will go before us. Amen. So when the righteousness of God will go before us, it goes on to say that people will be healed speedily. God, some of us need some speedy healings. Some back, some knees, some cancer, some throat, some issues. God will deliver in the mind. He'll deliver in the body. He'll deliver speedily. God, move by your spirit, Lord God. Moved by your spirit, my God. And then it goes on to say that God's glory will be our reward. When we do what God has called us to do and do this fast, God's glory is going to show up. God's glory is going to, don't take it for granted how important the glory of God is. Now, also it talks about the glory, but also what's important is what it doesn't say. And I know Pastor Hill used to say this. It doesn't say that they're going to get a new tent. It doesn't say that they're going to have some red bottom sandals. It doesn't say that they're going to get a new donkey. But it does say that God's glory will be their reward. So God, send your glory, Lord God. Send your glory as proof of your presence, Lord. Amen. Verse 9. Then shall thou call and the Lord shall answer. When we're doing our prayer and fast, we'll be able to call on the Lord and he's going to answer. And thou shalt cry, and God's going to say, here I am. Some people are thinking God is way off. When we pray and fast, we're going to cry, and God's going to be like, here I am. If thou take away from the midst of the yoke and putting forth of the finger and speaking vanity, God wants us to stay humble. When the glory starts falling, we can't get all uppity. Mm -mm. When God starts using us, we can't be like other churches. We got to stay in the press. We got to be who God has called us to be. Amen? Verse 10. And if thou dry out, draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness be as the noonday. Verse 11. And the Lord shall guide thee continually. And the Lord shall guide thee continually. Somebody saying, God, I don't know what to do. But the Lord shall guide us continually and satisfy thy soul in drought. There's a drought coming, y'all. There's a drought coming. But God promised us when we do the fast that he has chosen, he shall satisfy our soul. There will be no lack. He says he will make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring water whose waters fail not. Lord, spring up a well. I don't know if I got any children's church folks in here. We used to say, spring up a well, and somebody hit, splish, splash. God, spring up a well, splish, splash. God, splish, splash, spring up a well inside of me. Spring up a well inside my soul, Father God, that wherever we go as the body of Christ, splish, splash, people can drink from the flow. Mm -hmm. People can drink from the flow. When we do the fast that he has chosen, these are the promises that he made, amen? So God, I say spring up a well. Spring up a well. Verse 12. <laughs> and they that shall be of these shall, bring, shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt rise up the foundation of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the past to, to dwell in. Now, we know that Jesus Christ is the mediator between God and man. He himself was all God and all man that brought man back to God. But we, as believers in Jesus Christ, he's given us a commandment. A, a, um, he's given us something to do. He's told us that we can be the repairers of the breach or the restorers of the past to dwell in. In other words, he's going to use us to preach the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we're going to be able to walk in the ministry and the word of reconciliation. Amen. That's the fast that he has chosen. Now, I also acknowledge that there'll be some challenges when we go through a fast, okay? Especially if you guys haven't gone through it. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Pastor always tells us don't eat a big meal. It's not that I eat a big meal. It's that I want to drink a soda, okay? And I know good and well if I drink a soda before I go on a fast, I'm going to start having headaches. So I stopped already, okay? So if you see me talking about, oh, I got a headache, say, really, you shouldn't have drank that soda, Okay, I know where my weakness is because you start sugar detoxing and you start having a headache. But uh, we had had a class on prayer um, the last time we taught Sunday school. And there was a section in the back on fasting. 
And the authors said, during the times of fast, there'll be crucifixion moments. In other words, there'll be moments where we can reckon our flesh dead. That time you want, you're going through the fast and you want to go grab a cheeseburger, that's a crucifixion moment where we reckon our flesh dead. And we ask God to lead us by the Spirit. And that's basically just Romans chapter 8, verse 1. We don't have to walk after the flesh, but we can walk in the Spirit. Amen? Now, I have an expectation when we go through the fast. And I, I exhort you to have some expectations as we go through the fast. Now, my list may be different than yours. It may be the same. You may want to add some things to it. But my first expectation is... I am expecting God to do a supernatural work. When we go through this fast on next week, I am expecting God to do a supernatural work to restore dreams and to restore visions, to strengthen people, to bring back joy. Some people are just going through the motions of church, but God wants to restore the joy of your salvation. I want God to bring back those things that are dead, to, re to revive them if they need to be revived. Some things are dead by God ordained, or God, God ordained them to be dead. But some things we just put on the side. So I want God to bring back some things that are dead and to restore broken relationships if they need to be restored. Amen? I am expecting God to have his way in my life and in our lives here in this church. I want God to have his way, not our way. Because some of us want to press up against the prick. We want to be who God wants us to be, but we want to do it our way. God, not my way. God, I want your will to be done. Your will, your way in my life. I am expecting that when we come out of this fast, we're going to have a keener ear to hear from the Spirit of God. God is going to give wisdom, knowledge, and revelation on who he is and what we need to do and where we need to go individually and collectively. Amen? I believe that God is going to set us up where we die to the flesh, that the glory of God can be revealed. Enough playing church. I don't want to play church. I don't want a facsimile of the Holy Ghost. I want the real thing. I want when I speak, I speak the oracles of God. When I go out into the streets, I have a word for somebody. That I'm able to lay hands and cast out the devil. That I'm able to lay hands and people get healed. Not just every once in a while. Some of us have seen some drops. God, I want to flow in it. That I don't question God, should I? God is saying, do it, I step in it. One time Pastor Hill said this. And he said it to us upstairs. He said, ministry's already going on. Just step in. God and the Holy Spirit is already moving. We just need to step in. Amen? I'm believing that God is going to meet needs. He's going to give people jobs who need jobs. He's going to meet financial needs because we're doing the fast that he has chosen. And because his glory is going to rest on us, once the glory comes, everything else comes. Because we're seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all those other things will be added on. So if you stand in need of anything, once the glory comes, everything else will be added on. Amen? I'm believing God to tear down strongholds in the mind that we walk in the power to cast out devils. I'm believing that God will heal body. He will heal soul. He will heal mind. He will deliver those who are bound. I'm believing that God, by the spirit of God, is going to save. I'm believing that he's going to save not just sinners coming into the church, but I'm believing he's going to use us to save when we go to work. I'm believing that he's going to use us to save in our household. I'm believing that he's going to use us to save when we go to the grocery store. I'm believing he's going to use us to save in the marketplace. I am believe he's going to use us to save and not only save, but make disciples. Not only save, but make disciples. And not only make disciples, get, but get people filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm believing that God is going to save, that he's going to deliver, that he's going to make disciples, that he's going to fill people with the Holy Ghost, and all those people who get saved, get discipled, and get filled is going to bring somebody back so they can get saved, and they can get discipled, and they can get filled, and then they're going to bring somebody back so they can get saved, and they can get discipled, and they can get filled. We're setting up a cycle. I believe that we're going to set up a cycle. God is going to use us to seek and save those who are lost. Amen? Let me leave you with Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. And saints of God, God is with us. So what we want to do is we want to press into this fast next week with an expectation that God is going to move. 
And we're going to need the whole church to participate. You know, we're going to bring you along, but when we're having a, a, a healing line, if you ain't got faith, you know, we, people won't get healed, so we need everybody as a corporate body just to participate in this, okay? And there's sign-in sheets in the north and east lobby, and I know somebody is saying in their mind, well, well Rita, I don't know how to pray. That's all right. Come here anyway. There's going to be people who will be leading out in prayer hourly, and then there'll be people who'll be agreeing with those prayers. So if you don't want, know what to do, Sister Coconut, come on out. If you don't know what to do, Brother Peanut, come on out. Because I believe that God is going to move through this prayer and fasting next week. I'm believing that God's glory is going to show up. I'm believing that God is going to do, is going to do God. I'm believing that the Holy Ghost is going to do the Holy Ghost. So we have to come expecting. If you're not expecting, he may not move for you. But if you come expecting, God is going to move. Amen? Amen? Father God, we thank you for this word, Father God. We thank you that you're in this place, Lord God. I'm asking you by your spirit, Father God, that you stir up a gift, Lord God, that people come out even to the fast and the shut-in on next week, Lord God, that you do something in our hearts collectively as a body next week, Lord. Even the weakest among us, Lord, we ask that you strengthen them, Lord God, that you restore by your spirit, Lord God, Restore the joy of their salvation. We don't want to play church. Mm. We don't want to play church. We want to know you, Lord God, for real. We want to serve you, Lord God, for real. So, God, we have an expectation that you'll show up. Because this is the fast that you have chosen. So, God, we ask you to be with us. For those who need to be here, Lord God, we ask that you remind them, Lord God, next Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday that we're going to shut in and we're going to press in and we're going to believe. We thank you, Lord God, for everybody who's here. Lord God, we ask that you have your way in our lives individually and collectively. We'll be careful to give you all the praise and honor and glory for there is only one God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if you agree with that prayer, say amen, amen. and amen. Ray, you can come on up just one more time. If you haven't signed up for the prayer and and shut in, there are sign-in sheets in the north and east lobby. And we're expecting God to have his way. Amen? Amen. Let's praise God for that word tonight. Praise God. Praise God for the word that was spoken by Lady Elder Rita Branch. And this is really important that we take heed to the word that pertains to prayer and fasting. This is what we have to do. That's if we don't want to uh, dry up at the vine. So if we want to, we, if we want to be a fruitful branch, then it's going to require that we make some sacrifices. Our bishop leads in prayer and fasting. I, I, I don't know anybody who fasts as much as he does. And uh, he's, he's on a fast every week. He's on a fast every week. Sometimes he's on a fast and he doesn't even include us in, fast, in that fast. But he, he's a man of prayer and fasting. And he's trying to be an example to us. He's trying to set an example example of a life of prayer and fasting and this is something that he knows works <laughs> he know it works and he's trying to instill that in us because he know that this this works oh yes it's gonna hurt it's gonna hurt but it's gonna hurt so good <laughs> it's gonna hurt so good so uh Let's just go ahead and yield ourselves to this, and we can see God do some wonderful things in this ministry, some wonderful things in our individual lives. Can we all agree it's touching? Praise God. Well, let's prepare tonight for, uh, well, well, before we take up offering, um, is there any first-time visitor? You're here for the very first time. Would you please stand so we can see who you are? We have a wonderful gift that we want to give you. 
Okay. I met this brother. He walked into our evangelism training the other day. Glad to have you here today, sir. Uh, Bishop Hill and Lady Hill is away at this present time, and uh, we, we ask that you come again so that you can meet him personally. I think you said you met him once before, okay? Well, God bless you. And uh, I assume everybody here has accepted Christ as Savior because all of you are. There's no first-time visitor here. So we're going to move on and prepare our, our hearts for giving tonight. So uh, please prepare. Uh, offering envelopes are being passed out. And uh, we have several ways that you can give, as you well know. Um, our scripture of observation for giving tonight is in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And as we prepare to give, the word says, God is able... God is able to make all grace abound to you so that having sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. That's a promise. But how do we activate that promise? We activate it according to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, which says, I'm reading for the, from the English Standard Version, which says, the point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whosoever soweth bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one, hear that, each one must give as he has decided in his heart. Have you made a decision yet? You still have time. Not reluctantly or under compulsion. God says that he loves a cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver. And then he goes on to say, and God is able, here's that verse, and God is able to make all grace abound to you so that having all sufficiency, how, how many want to have all sufficiency? That's a good promise. All sufficiency? In all things, at all times, oh my God, that you may abound in every good work. So let's prepare to give tonight so that you can, you can have all sufficiency in all things, at all times. Is everybody prepared to give? All right. We can all stand. Let it be known that, that there will be a newsletter going out on Friday that's going to inform you of the things that's upcoming in this week. And uh, we have prayer times at 5 a.m. on tomorrow morning and Friday as well. Uh, also, let it be known that uh, this is the evangelistic church right here. This church does uh, street ministry. And some of you have seen in the... Uh, newsletter about evangelism training you don't have to do nothing but show up and take a ride with me you you can be like a, a ride along okay you ain't got to say nothing you ain't got to do nothing you just show up and you can watch me okay you come out you watch me and I'll show you something Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight. Thank you for the word that was spoken by Lady Elder Rita Branch, who is my wife. And God, we thank you for this great ministry, these great leaders who have made a great sacrifice. And I pray that they will reap the rewards of their labor. May they want for nothing. May they be well supplied. May their health not fail. May they live as long as they want and not want as long as they live. We pray for every person who is planting seed tonight. May the seed that they sow tonight bring forth a harvest. May the people of God be blessed. 
May we be full of love. May we be full of faith. May, may we be full of hope. Now protect us as we go. Keep our eyes on you. And bring us back at the appointed time. In Jesus' name, amen. You're now in the hands of the ushers. God bless each and every one of you. Greet someone before you leave. God bless you. Thank you for attending Loving Unity Christian Fellowship on today. We would like you to participate in this time of worship and giving. You can utilize text to give Ministry One app, or go to loveandunity.org. If you would like to text, please text the word GIVE to 310-507-1181. Or you can use our new church Ministry One app by going to your Play Store and ordering Ministry One app. It's free. Or go to loveandunity.org, L-O-V-E-A-N-D-U-N-I-T-Y.org and you can give there. Thank you so much again for joining us here at Love and Unity Christian Fellowship. You're gonna have a good time.